When you think of a river, what do you think of? I think of peacefulness, stillness, relaxation, sitting on the riverbank with a fishing rod, throwing a line out, trying to catch some fish in the midst of this chaotic world. Our podcast tonight has to do with a river. And a river, as the psalmist says, is in the midst of Jerusalem. But there's no river in Jerusalem. What was going on during that time that the psalm was written? Uh, what does it mean when it says God is in the midst of her, but there's a river? Our podcast has the answers to that. And talk about this thought. Well, I will not face the battle alone. You can access this podcast by getting on our YouTube page or clicking the link above this video. And I hope and trust that you enjoy this and it's an encouragement and a help to you. I hope everybody's having a great Wednesday. I just want to let you know I'm praying for you. I'm thinking of you. And I'm still looking forward to when all this is over and we can gather once again as a church and uh, worship Him and look in the Scriptures and grow in Him. Hope and pray everybody's doing well as you're listening to my words. And uh, once again, I'm joined by... Jeff Jenkins and Tim Polly, and uh, we're going to look once again when God is our refuge, episode three. And uh, I want to begin, Jeff. What is something that you're thankful for during this time? And there's a lot of negativity we see on social media and things, but what's something you're thankful for during this time? Well, I'm thankful that uh, you know that uh, we've been able to to be safe during this time, to be healthy during this mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. as of this recording. And, yes, uh, yes. Uh, you know, just thankful for God's faithfulness and, um, you know, for my job and just, you know, different things, you know, just different things like that and know that, and just thankful for the peace. And as you've discussed in these couple of episodes, how God is in control mm -hmm. and the peace that that brings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm thankful for um, my family. I really am. I've, uh, times like this, I don't want this to sound wrong or anything, but times like this helps me to realize the simplicity of life. Uh, I, I feel like our world is addicted to busyness. And sometimes maybe God is intervening, and I don't know, he's intervening and causing us to just to stop for a second. And just realize the blessings that we have. Um, you know, I was playing with my kids this morning and, and just thankful that God gave them to me. And it's just the simplicity of life. I, you know, I've, just, uh, I've just enjoyed kind of taking a chill pill as a pa the pastor that mentored me used to say, sometimes then you got to take a chill pill. You don't get so busy in ministry, you know. And I was able to take a little chill pill and... Um, and it's very, it's very hard to do because our society is addicted to busyness, addicted to the process, the progress. And I don't want to use the word withdrawals, but sometimes in our minds and our hearts, we, are, um, we, we desire Mayberry, <laughs> the simplicity of Mayberry. And when that simplicity of Mayberry comes, we're like fidgeting, like there's something we got to do, something we got to do, something we got to do. And in those moments, I just I have to remind myself, Dean, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for my kids. And like you said, I'm thankful for my health. I'm thank thankful for my job. I'm thankful for the opportunity to pastor people, to, to, to preach the word to people. Um, God has a lot of blessings, even though our minds sometimes focus on the negative. So just something to start off with tonight. But the last time we got together, we examine the first result of applying Psalm 46.1, and it was, I will not fear the circumstances around me. And once again, this psalm has three stanzas, all divided by the word Selah. Our emphasis in this episode is the second stanza, from verse 4 to verse 7. Let's read this. There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. 
The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This second result of having God be our refuge is that of I will not face the battle alone. The first thing, I, I, I will not fear the circumstances around me. The second is, I will not face the battle alone. Why? Well, look, look, let's look here in verse 4. Uh, verses 4 through verse uh, 5. Because God is in the midst of my life. Note that phrase, there is a river. That means divine grace. Like a smoothly flowing, fertilizing, full, and never failing river that yields refreshment and consolation to believers in Jesus Christ. A water of life. Now this just wasn't a creek when it says there's a river. It doesn't say there's a creek. (laughs) It says there's a river. It's a lot of water. It's a river provided to the inhabitants of the city. Now, the context of this psalm is the people, they're confined to Jerusalem. A Syrian army is going to attack. They're sieging the city. And when an army sieges a city in those times, the first thing they do is cut off their water supply. But Jerusalem didn't have a water supply. Jerusalem was not built on a river. There, every city in, in, in antiquity was built. Egypt had the Nile. Assyria had the Tigris. Babylon had the Euphrates. India had the Indus River. I could go on and on and on. But Jerusalem wasn't built on a river. Knowing that sooner or later that the Assyrian army would besiege Jerusalem, King Hezekiah, we looked in a previous episode how if you're sieged and you're leading the city, how how are you going to lead? What what steps are you going to take? And I'm sure he had people tell him this and people tell him that and advisors here and advisors there. He wisely and practically ensured that Jerusalem had an unfailing water supply no matter how long the siege. Well, how did he do that? This guy's brilliant. He had a underground, underground water supply built, water system built. There's a spring of Gihon located in a 20 by 7 foot cave below the eastern hill of Opel between Jerusalem and the Mount of Olives in that deep Kidron Valley. He diverted that spring through a conduit, 1,777 feet long. It was hewn out of solid rock into a reservoir inside the city walls. It was called the Pool of Siloam. 2 Kings 20, 20, 2 Chronicles 32, 30 mentions this. He, and you can even see that in Jerusalem today. He then completely covered the ancient spring So the enemy would not even know that spring was there. So throughout that siege, there was an ever-present river. A river the streams were of made glad the city of God. That's the imagery in that verse. For all his great strength and cunning tricks, Assyria, they knew nothing of this unfailing source of inner refreshment without which this city of Jerusalem could have not even, they couldn't have lasted more than a month or two. They needed water. Without that hidden river, Jerusalem would have fallen, not from the strength of the foe without, but from the weakness and failure within. Instead, the city had that secret river that kept it strong. Note that phrase, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High, verse 5. Jerusalem was indeed the holy city, set apart by God, and his sanctuary, the temple, was there. But these things were no guarantee of victory. The king and his people needed to turn to him in confession and faith, And he would hear and save them. Thus the psalmist said, God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. The psalmist draws upon the illustration by saying God was in the midst of that river, and it was God that truly provides us with the water of life. There was somebody in the midst. We know who it was in the midst of his believing people. Who, this is an image due to Christ. We see him in the midst of the temple scholars as a boy at 12. In the midst of the upper room after his resurrection. In the midst of the lampstands walking amongst the churches in Revelation. In the midst of the throne. In the midst of the cherubim. In the midst of the 24 hours in glory. He is always in the midst when it says 
God is in the midst of her. He's in the midst when God's people gather today. We're gathering right now to listen to this podcast. He's in the midst of Jerusalem when the Assyrian army threatened the city from without. Think about that marvelous river that we have within the Bible. God the Father has set before us a fountain of living water. Jeremiah 2.13, God the Son has set before us a well of living water. John 4, 13 and 14, God the Holy Spirit has set before us as a river of living water. We have that marvelous river within. The Holy Spirit's come down from the throne of God to fill our hearts, provide us with that unfailing reservoir of spiritual supply. No enemy can stop that, but we have to have the choice to tap into that. The streams thereof. Those streams, the citizens of Zion would unfailingly supply all their needs. God's in the midst of her. How can she be moved unless her enemies move her Lord also? And they couldn't do that. God shall help her. What's, what, Jeff, what, what, what's this say to you about the, the idea of the river and God's in the midst? What, what thoughts come to your mind when we look at that verse there? It goes to a future river. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a future <laughs> river. Yep. In the millennial reign of, of Christ. Oh, man. You know, and... Uh, you just that's that's where the energy takes me yeah. too, you know, yeah. of that uh you know, the the city of our God and, and and that river, you know, that will that will be that will be part of the millennium. And that that gives you good imagery about about that. Future promise. Yeah. Future promise is almost like a, a it's a present promise and it's a future promise. And it showed how God provided for them and and, and presently we have that Holy Spirit power. And we can tap in. The Lord's always there. Nothing takes him by surprise. It's just we have to choose to tap into it. But like you said, I like that. The future, the river yeah. that flows from, him, from, the, from the throne of God yeah. in Revelation. Man, that's pretty good stuff. Understand that there's a river. Christ, he's with you. He promised he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He'll refresh you. He'll nourish you. No matter what the circumstances are in life, we can drink at the river of his joy and blessing and find the peace and strength we need. He's in the midst of our life. Here's another thing. I will not face the battle alone because there's a river. God's in the midst of my life. But notice this, verse 6 and 7. God is in the midst of my problem. Notice it says, the heathen raged, the nations raged, the kingdoms removed. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. It says the heathen raged, or the nations raged. Talking about Assyria in this context, they were, a furious, they were in a furious uproar. They were gathering against Jerusalem like, like wolves. They were ravenous for their prey. They foamed, they roared, they swelled like a stormy sea. They troubled the prey. You know what the enemy does this to us as well. The battle's spiritual. Principalities, powers, the rulers of darkness of this world. You, would you confess that there's spiritual warfare? <laughs> sure. Oh, absolutely. The battle's not flesh and blood. Yeah. The battle, we talked about the mind, of course, but the idea of uh, uh, the, pro sometimes the problems of our life can be spiritual. They can be spiritual problems. They're physical, but they're, they can be spiritual. And I thought about this. If we're a believer in Christ, we have an enemy that wants us to fail. He wants us to give into our temptation. He wants us to do that. And we need a refuge from the enemy's wrath. It says the kingdom's removed. The ground would become a wasteland in the enemy's midst. And the people of Jerusalem knew that they had a problem. But God uttered his voice and the earth melted. Just with a word... Just with a word, the same God that created everything with a word was the same God that stilled a storm. He gave forth a voice. Stout hearts were dissolved, proud armies annihilated, conquering powers made weak. The word of God. There's power in the word from the Lord. It says in verse 7, the Lord of hosts is with us. That right there is the reason for all Jerusalem security and for the overthrow of Assyria. The Lord rules the angels, the stars, the elements, and all the host of heaven. And the heaven of heavens 
or under his sway. But I thought about this. I was studying this, Jeff, and it says, the Lord of hosts is with us. What did the angel tell Mary that you shall call his name, what? God with us. Yeah. What, what is the word? Yeah, God with us. Yeah. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yes. In Hebrew, the Lord of hosts, the word in Hebrew is Emmanuel. That is the, it, it, the foe was defeated before he ever left Assyria. God did help Jerusalem when the morning dawned for the angel of the Lord killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers and sent Sennacherib home. Isaiah 37 verse 36. Now we take note of the victories God gave for his people and we understand regardless of the trouble you're facing, we're always going to have problems. Um, I've, I've pastored a while. I've been an assistant pastor and I've been in ministry for a long time. And one thing I do know, everybody has problems. When you think that somebody else doesn't have any problems and you have all the problems, you're deceiving yourself. Everybody has problems because we live in this sin-cursed world. Circumstances happen out of our control. Viruses happen. Um, earthquakes happen. Um, like we looked at Nashville a few weeks ago, a tornado struck down. That is this world, this sin-cursed world, crawling for its redemption. God is stronger and more powerful than those problems. We have to trust him to take care of it. You get, Jeff, you got any example of any time where you knew God was in the midst of your problem or you had maybe a problem or something and, and he was in the midst, not only in your life with the river, but also any, any problems, anything? Yeah, I mean, just, uh, oh, just some circumstances, you know, at work and, and different things and uh, just things come up, you know, with, uh, with people that you work with or whatever. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, you know, and, and you just, you turn to God for some guidance. You turn to God with, with peace and you just, uh, every day you just, you know, you turn it over to him and, and, and then hope to trust in him. You know, this ver this go back to verse five, just real quick. He, you know, mm -hmm. they said, God, God will help. Yeah, her when the morning. What trust, right? God yeah. will help. They trusted God, and uh, especially after the psalm was written, I mean, they knew they could say with confidence that God will help. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and and He did help them when when the battle was there, uh, and I think that's where we have to come to. That God's going to help us. God's going to help us mm -hmm. in the middle of the trial. It's not saying it won't be easy. Not saying it won't be difficult. Not saying we won't struggle, but in the end, we know that God will help us, and. Uh, and his will will be done. We can trust in him. Mm -hmm. I noticed that phrase too, God shall help her yeah. just at the break of dawn. Right. Something about a sunrise, right? Yeah. Uh, the sunrise, I thought about lamentations. His mercies are new every morning. Every morning. That sun rises. Yesterday was a memory. Yeah. Uh, you may have to face that problem again when that sun rises. But when that sun rises, there's an imagery there the darkness of that problem is over and there's a new day. There's a new opportunity. Um, I thought about that. Yeah, just at the time of battle, when the morning dawns, there's God, uh -huh. you know, yeah. ready to help. And, of course, Jerusalem, they were all scared. Everybody was, they were bunkered down. And the morning, the sun rose in the eastern, in the, at the eastern gate. The next morning, they found out the enemy wasn't there anymore. <laughs> and they're going, God, this is incredible. And their faith was tested and stretched right there to the last point. And I thought about this in our lives. Sometimes we're just surrounded. Sometimes the problem is too much for us to bear. Sometimes, uh, but we, we, we have this promise that there's a river because God is in the midst of our life. If we trust him and God is in the midst of our problem. Remember the emphasis of this psalm is on the presence of God with his people. And the difference it makes when we trust him in the difficulties and changes of this life. Remember, verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. While we wait, God's working. While we wait, God's fighting our battles. While we wait, God's still in control. Is he in the midst of your life? Is he in the midst of your problem? That's the decision we have to make to surrender things to her. Any other word about this uh, passage before we close? No, it's just, um, 
you know, people go through real problems and we just don't say that superficially and people go through real difficulties and real problems and, uh, and you know, God is there and, and God is there to help us. And Paul said in 2 Corinthians about uh, being in 2 Corinthians that God calls him the God of all comfort. Mm-hmm. And he said, and I, I go through, Paul was saying, I go through difficulties so I can comfort other people. He comforts me so I can comfort others. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the ministries of being in, in trouble or being in, mm-hmm. in tough times. Amen. Well, if you're listening, thank you so much for joining us with this simple Bible study. And uh, there's several old sermons on the website that you can listen to um, though we can't get out and worship together I'm really missing that and uh, miss seeing everybody miss miss preaching to you miss worshiping together miss miss talking to each and every one of you but uh, I'm looking forward in anticipation when we can do that again and it should be soon Lord willing we'll keep praying for that let's close with a word of prayer Jeff could you close us in prayer Dear Lord, we do thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that you say here, Lord, that we will not face the battle alone, Lord, and thank you that you're there. Thank you for that future city that we look forward to, Lord, the reign of Christ. Lord, and everything will be new, Lord, and you will reign, God. We look forward to that. Thank you that you are our refuge and our strength, as this psalm says in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you.